Artemis is building on an already solid legacy. If we look backwards in time just a little bit, right now our crews are on the International Space Station learning how to truly work off of the planet. How does the human body perform? How do we resupply this International Space Station? These are lessons that will be critical on the moon and as we look forward. And then if you step back in time, how do we build a launch cadence like we had in the space shuttle to service things in low Earth orbit? Looking back from that to Skylab, our first efforts to live off of the planet. And then Apollo, of course. Apollo, to me, changed the entire direction of our nation and in many ways of the entire world, just achieving the truly unthinkable in the 1960s. Uh, Apollo inspired an entire planet. When we think about Artemis, we focus a lot on the moon, but I just want everybody in the room and everybody watching to remember, our sights are not set on the moon. Our sights are set clearly on Mars. And everything that you're thinking about today, everything that we're going to do on Artemis 1, Artemis 1 leads to Artemis 2, which leads to Artemis 3, when we hope to have humans on the surface of the moon. But Artemis 3 is leading to the rest of the Artemis program. Uh, the first woman, the first person of color on the surface of the moon, and then the first humans tracking out to Mars and putting our footsteps in building science laboratories and, and inhabiting another, another planet. To me, it's just the most awe-inspiring moment that we have had here at NASA, and I, I love working here right now. It's, it's an honor to get to do so. Boosters beginning to fire and lift off. Lift off of Reed Wiseman, Max Sarayev, and Alexander Gerst, the international crew on their way to the International Space Station. Um, we have uh, zero bias for roll, for uh, yaw, and half a degree for beach. Okay, copy, waiting for the contact. Uh, speaking simultaneously, we uh, And contact and capture confirmed at 8.44 p.m. Central Time. The uh, BCAT is a binary colloidal alloy test that studies nanoscale particles disposed in liquid known as a uh, colloidal suspension. Mm -hmm. 
We spent about, uh, I don't know, probably a quarter of our time looking in ourselves and what is going on with the human body. Right there, I'm looking at uh, my calf muscle on the ultrasound. Really neat to watch my calf go from the back of my leg and it kind of regrew on the front of my leg because I was just using different muscles while I was up there. Every astronaut's dream is to get to do a spacewalk. And so uh, come about October, we got the chance to go out and do two spacewalks. Uh, first one was with Alex Gerst, and that was great. Two rookies going out the door. First time in the space station program we had done that. And if you want to up the gains and up the nerves a good bit, uh, that was it for me. But uh, I'm kind of scared of heights. You can see me there on the bottom. I'm, I'm stuck out on one of these things. Alex took this picture with a, a fisheye lens, 10.5 millimeter. So the Earth isn't quite that curved. You can see it's a little bent. Uh, but man, what a fascinating, what a fascinating view. We're outside for about six and a half hours. You got a little, little drink bag of water. And before we even go out the hatch, it's four hours in that suit. So it's a very long day. Uh, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, mentally, physically, it doesn't matter. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I've landed on a, on a Navy ship over 500 times, a bunch of them at night, but this takes the cake for difficulty. Uh, and also takes the cake for just a ridiculously cool thing to get to go do. I, I think they saved the best for last. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast, they definitely saved the best for last. Uh, we get in our little spacecraft and you undock from the space station and we look out the window and there's just stuff coming off of it like crazy. And I was like, that's amazing to look out there. It was part of our spacecraft a few minutes ago and now it's disintegrating. And then as you really start hitting the thick part of the atmosphere, the window turns from pink to red to maroon and eventually to black. You can't see anything anymore. And so really amazing. And, uh, and then the parachute comes out. You're still supersonic. Uh, you've just been at about five Gs. And then the parachute comes out. And then it's just crazy mayhem. And you feel like you're tumbling and flipping around. And you are tumbling and flipping around and spinning around. And then it all starts to quiet down. And you're just kind of coming down under parachutes real nice. And you ride your way down. And, uh, and then the last hit is the, the landing in Kazakhstan. And it's a really hard hit. The rescue forces open our, our hatch almost immediately. You feel this cold air of Kazakhstan come in, great feeling. And then they start pulling you out one by one. I was the last one to get pulled out. And you get, as you're going out, like I wanted to touch the outside of that spacecraft and get my hands all charred and black from all that. So I did that. And then they put you in a seat. And, uh, and there's more adrenaline than you could ever imagine right there in that moment. And so there's, I mean, they probably could have taken an arm from me and I wouldn't even have noticed. <laughs> 